In this video, I'm going to introduce animation inside a graphic scale. Just to note, a lot of your graphics programs are capable of making frame by frame animations. However, graphic scale can be a little bit trickier in that department. Also, as a side note, there are plenty of animation programs out there that focus strictly on animation. Probably one of the biggest ones is the vector based graphics program Adobe Animate. Yes, once upon a time it was Adobe Flash, however, it's been reinvented as Adobe Animate and focuses more on a WebGL-based type of animation for the web. But let's go ahead and take a look at graphic scale. Probably some of the big windows that you're going to need is once again, you're going to want to work with that layers panel, but also you want to have your preview available to you. This is where you're actually going to be able to see your animation occurring in real time. But then also too, I'm going to zoom in here and one of the other big things you're going to have is this frames panel down at the bottom. Now, as far as frames go, we normally count by FPS or frames per second. The base default that we often work with is 24 frames per the second, which means I would need 24 of these boxes to equal one real world second. However, depending on what you're designing, that can also change as far as the overall platform, but also the overall type of animation that is being worked on. For instance, a lot of video games work in 60 frames per second. So that would mean I would need 60 of these individual frames to equal one real world second. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, a couple of things that I like to do whenever I'm working inside of graphic scale is first off, I'm gonna go ahead and rename my layer. So another thing too is when you're exporting your video, you want to take into consideration as far as any form of transparencies. This means that the background won't be visible. So if you want to have, for instance, just a ball bouncing or moving across your main drawing area, you want to make sure that for when you export it, you want to set this transparent color. So I'm going to go ahead and call this ball animation and say, okay. So, a couple of other things you might want to do is I often like to turn on the grid whenever I'm animating. It's up to you if you'd like 8x8, 32x32, etc. But it's a nice tracking process that it will make it a little bit easier in the animation flow. So I'm going to go ahead here, I'm going to grab a color, and I'm going to grab the circle. And let's go ahead here and draw a circle. So right now I have a single layer, but also if I scroll down here, I also have a single frame where it has the ball in place. Now, when I'm thinking about frames, the goal is I wanna take the ball from here and maybe move it up into this corner here. Now, I have a couple of options. I could technically just make a second frame and move the ball up here. The problem is it's gonna be really jarring to the eye. So now that I have my drawing here, Let's think about this. I want to go ahead, maybe my main goal in the animation is to have the ball move from this location, maybe up into this location here. So the easiest way to do that is to make duplicates of the frame and then make selections and move accordingly. So down in the frame panel, there's a drop down arrow that I can go ahead and you can see I actually have several options here. But what I want to do is duplicate this frame. And I'm going to duplicate it into right. Now, a nice thing about this is it's going to automatically add that transparency color for me. But what it's going to do is it's going to give this weird name here with the percent values. You actually want to leave this alone. In comparison to layers, layers where we want to name them specifically, we actually want the frame names to be generated by graphic scale. One of the reasons is, is when you export, you can either export as an animated GIF or you can export into a folder as individual frame images. If you choose the latter, a lot of program software packages, what they will do is they will recognize that you are working with an animation and a set of frames, and they'll compile them in their software program for you. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Now you notice here, I'm now active on my second frame. So now I can go ahead and start and continue to animate here. So as I said before, I wanted to move the ball. So I'm going to go ahead here. I'm going to choose that rectangular selection. I'm going to select the ball. 
and I'm going to move it ever so slightly. Now one thing that can be tricky here is you've lost the reference of the original frame here. All the way at the top menu bar here, you have something called onion skin. This is a really common practice in animation, and if I turn that on, you can now see I kind of have this opaque reference to the previous frame. So now I can maybe make the animation a little less jarring here and kind of line it up there. And so now a couple of things is number one, I can still see the reference, but number two, you can see over in the preview panel, it's starting to do the animation for me. So let's go ahead and come down here. We're going to go ahead and duplicate, making sure that I have that frame two selected. And I'm going to go ahead and do a duplicate and duplicate into right. I'm going to let it set again, and then I'm going to come up, select the ball, and notice that once again, I have that previous reference with the onion skin. And then really, it's just the process of doing this. Now, one other thing I'd like to demonstrate with the animation here is we are going to keep this very short, but let's say on this Let's make one more frame here. We're going to move it up a little bit further. And you can see the animation occurring in the preview here. But let's say now on the fifth frame, so I'm going to duplicate the fourth into the fifth, we're going to add a smile face on the front of the ball here. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to move it one more space. And now, this is where layers come into play. Each individual frame is its own separate entity in graphic scale. So I could go ahead here and add a new layer. I'll call this the face, and I'll keep it transparent. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use my draw tool. I'm going to maybe choose a darker color here. Let's actually go way darker here so you can see. And you can see how it's actually changing over on the side here. However, if you notice in my preview, notice the previous frames, they don't have that animation there. If I actually click on the previous ones, you can actually see that the layer has now lost that smile layer there in frame five. So that's another thing to take into consideration when you're working with animation and graphic scale. For each of the keyframes, it has its own individual set of layers, but that's why we duplicate as far as the baseline is concerned, so that we have that base ball and we're not trying to redraw it every single frame. That would just add more work. Now the last thing to share with you is, to this point you can see the preview has been playing over and over again. If at any point you just want to pause the preview, up on the main menu bar here is a pause button. If I hit that, notice that the preview stops. That can be a little bit helpful just in the case that, you know, if it starts to get a little bit distracting. So that's some of the bare bones basics as far as getting started with the animation. When you're ready to export, you're going to come under the file dropdown menu. It's up to you. I would encourage doing a save though. So maybe I call this animation base just so that I have the original graphic scale file. But what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to choose File and Export. And I'm going to go ahead and come in here and I'm going to zoom in. You actually have numerous options here. First off, under the type, you have multiple file options. And each of the frames are going to be based off of the frame number. You're also going to have a file type and you can actually set the prefix number. Just so you know, as far as the GIF goes, you can also click under the option for the file type and you'll get sub options. However, just leaving it as a GIF, GIF is going to be fine. So let me go ahead here and say OK. And it's going to ask you for an output folder. So I'm actually going to cancel for a second and let's generate that output folder. So I'm going to just jump on the desktop here and I'll do new folder and let's call this example animation one. So I'll go back into graphic scale and let's do an export again. I'm going to leave everything as is and I'm going to say option 
And now, let me zoom in, it's recognizing that example animation folder. I'm going to tell it OK. Graphic scale will think for a second. But now you can see inside of this folder here, what it has done for me is it has generated individual frames of each of the images. As I shared earlier, this can be really beneficial from the standpoint that if you know you're going to import into another program, such as Unity, Premiere, After Effects, etc., normally because of the numerical values included in each of these file names, the program's going to recognize that you have a frame by frame animation. And the program will therefore go ahead and actually compile the images into that animation for you. Now, another option that you have from a save standpoint is you can do things such as save as. And here I can save it as a GIF. I'll go ahead and save. Sometimes you'll get this error as far as your color options. You can just go ahead and say yes. And now you can see here, if I go ahead and double click on this, it's a little bit on the slow side just because we're only doing the five frames, but you can see now that I have an animated GIF. One of the last options is when you go under the file and the export, you do have this frame option here as far as the output. And if I go ahead and say OK, one other option, if you'd like, is you can come in and do a file. And you can go in and once again do an export option. To this point, I showed you the multiple files, but maybe you want a combined image. You can choose the number of columns that you're going to need for your image's animation. This is a nice way of actually generating sprite sheets. So if I go ahead and say OK, it's going to ask me as far as setting up the animation. So maybe I change this from animation base. I'll add column at the end of it just so that we have that call and that identifier there. And now, if we take a look here, I'll go ahead and double click. Here you can see it made a column of each of the individual animated frames. This would be a great way now, as far as having a sprite sheet, that I could import into a game software package such as Unity or Unreal. So those are some of the main options you have whenever you're animating in graphic scale. Most other software packages are going to have the same options available to you, that you can either animate the GIF, you can animate the individual frames, or you can choose as far as how many columns and spacing you want, so that then that, that specific file is ready to be uploaded into a game program.